I do think there's an opportunity to get some big things done, some big things that will require bipartisan uh, work, but um, immigration and infrastructure are two of them. So, uh, you know, I'm hopeful. Infrastructure is probably the easier list of the two. Immigration, though, is the one that's facing a, a quicker deadline, that March 8th deadline for DACA, for the Dreamers. Do you think it's possible that there's something in everything that's been put forth that, that could actually get 60 votes in the Senate and then push it back on, on over? Yeah, I really do. If you, if you think about the president's speech last night and what he has laid out, you know, the centerpiece is an offer that is far more generous to the, the DACA people, the, the Dreamers, than even the policy that President Obama illegally uh, implemented through executive order. I mean, he would make almost triple the number of people eligible, and not just for a legal status, but for citizenship over time. That is pretty much everything that the Dreamers have wanted. The Democrats have to agree to border security and some changes to the um, uh, migration rules. But I gotta believe there's a, a place to find some common ground there. Although the Democrats, uh, at least plenty of them, have said that the deal that the president has put forth is a non-starter, that they won't agree to cut back immigration uh, that significantly. Do you think there's wiggle room there? Is there still room for negotiation? Yeah, you know, again, when you say that uh, not the 690,000 who signed up for DACA, but 1.8 million dreamers mm -hmm. get permanent legal status and an opportunity to become citizens, how do the Democrats walk away from that? Because what, second cousins and aunts and uncles are not allowed to come in subsequently? You know, I, everybody well, it, agrees. It's not just that, it's also parents, other people uh, related to it's, it. Beyond well, the immediate family, uh, just your well, children. Well, but the part, of, part of the problem is it is the parents who brought these kids to this country illegally. If the fact that they brought their kids illegally gives them a better legal position in the United States than someone else who came here illegally but didn't also bring kids illegally. That, that's a pretty counterintuitive outcome. So, so you, think, you think it's a pretty hard line of, of, um, of an offer at this point? Take uh, it look, I, I'm not sure exactly where this line gets drawn, but I think we have to significantly curb the chain migration, significantly shift to a more merit and skill-based immigration system, and there really ought to be a way to get there. Senator Schumi, when it comes to infrastructure, that, that's also um, one that's a little tricky because it depends on how much public financing is going to be put forth from this. So the original estimate was $200 billion. It sounds like it could potentially be more than that. What would you feel comfortable with um, in an infrastructure deal? Well, I will tell you, I was pleased to hear the way the president characterized this. He, he used the figure of $1.5 trillion, but uh, I think if you look closely, it was pretty clear that that is not intended to be all federal tax dollars, but rather a combination of federal, state, and local, and private. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly the way we should approach it. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the federal government spends a staggering amount of money on infrastructure every year, $50 billion on roads and bridges alone every year. So I'm open to an increase in that amount, but I do think we should bring in state and local and wherever possible private capital. It just makes sense to leverage up the federal contribution. Sure. Is there a number, though, that, that, that is kind of your line in the sand when it comes to it? Uh, no more than $200 billion, no more than 300 or $400 No, billion? Becky, I, I, I it's couldn't a negotiation. Put, not out of context, right? I think right. what matters is where's the rest of the money coming from? How is it being used? Are we going to have the good sense to lower the cost? I mean, the president's exactly right. The idea that it takes 10 years to get an approval to build a road mm -hmm. is ridiculous, and it contributes a lot to the cost. If we take the kind of measures that allow us to save a lot of the money we could save, that would help too. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.